Hi everyone, just a quick video on uh, a multimeter, what it is, what it does and how to set it up if you're going to use it. So first thing you need to know when you're using a multimeter is what obviously you want to test and how you want to test it. So uh, first up, there's two types of electricity that you might test with a multimeter. There is AC, which is alternating current, and DC, which is direct current. Alternating current is anything that's generated. You can only produce or generate electricity in AC form. So an alternator on a car would be AC. A power station's AC and the household supply that you get from a power station at your plugs is all AC. And the other one is DC. So the DC is the only way you can store electricity is in DC. So all the batteries in the world are DC. So most car systems run off DC batteries because the battery is part of that circuit. There are some alternating current sensors on a car, uh, but the vast majority of your tests would be DC. And obviously some electric and hybrid cars do have AC sections in them as well, but 99% uh, of the tests you're going to do on a normal internal combustion engine car will be DC. Um, so with the multimeter itself, it'll test three different things uh, on all of them. There are some other things, but uh, the first, the three major things it will do, it will test resistance in ohms. It will test voltage in volts and it will test current in amperes or amps as everybody calls it. So those are the three things that a multimeter will do. So I'm going to go through each of the settings, uh, how to set it up and how to, to use it for each of those things. So. Uh, resistance in ohms is the amount of energy lost in a circuit. So no circuit is, is perfect. Um, every single connection, every bit of wire degradation around that circuit, you're going to lose efficiency and you're going to lose energy. So with this multimeter here and this particular setting at the top here, this is the ohms one. So that's your omega sign there, which indicate ohms. You can have 20 million all the way down to 200 ohms. If you don't know what you're expecting, the golden rule is always start at the top one. At the moment it's turned on but there's no leads in so that number one sometimes it's an ol for open loop indicates there's an open circuit it's not getting a reading uh, for this particular test you need to get your multimeter uh, earth lead it's not technically an earth but it always goes black in black so com stands for common earth and then you get your red lead it doesn't matter if you put these in the wrong way around they are just color code it doesn't affect the usage of the multimeter you've also got a 10 amps a 2 amps and then volts and uh, resistance there, so that will go in there. So if I don't know what I'm expecting uh, for resistance, then what I would do is I'd set it on the higher setting. If I use this halogen bulb as an example and put my two leads across it, I'll get zero. That's telling me that the circuit is actually uh, complete, but it can't give me a reading because I'm not on the right setting. So I would then drop down my multimeter until I get a, a reading that I want. Again, if you're not sure, just do it one at a time and you'll keep getting zeros. For me, I know it's not going to be high resistance in a, in a small bulb like this, so I'll put it on the lowest setting. And then what it'll do, it'll give me a reading of how much ohms uh, resistance is lost uh, through the wiring within this bulb. So um, yeah, that's how you do resistance test. If you're not actually bothered really about whether how much resistance is in the bulb, having understanding what resistance in the bulb is very good if you've got multiple things to test so four spark plugs four ht leads at the same length doing a resistance test and finding out the amount of ohms in each one uh, is really useful because you can actually compare them and, and figure out which is the one that's gone faulty or has high resistance if all you want to know is whether this bulb is complete or the wiring inside is complete there's also this uh speaker setting here or diode test which is called it's just a continuity test so it's just checking is the wiring inside the the test component continuous and all you do is get a buzz and that's telling me the wire inside that bulb is okay and then you can move on to the next part of your diagnostics. So that's the ohm setting uh, the resist for the resistance. The next one is volts, uh, measured obviously voltage uh, measured in volts. So on your multimeter you'll have two different ones. A straight line with some dashes underneath is DC and the uh, wavy line is alternating so that's AC. So if you were working on uh, finding how much current was coming to a plug in a house you'd use this scale. If you're working on anything on anything on a car really or that comes off a DC battery, you'd use the DC scale. Again, if you are not sure, start on the highest setting and work down. If you're working on a car battery, they're always 12.5 uh, to 12.8 volts. If they're healthy, so you put it on the 20 setting uh, and then you put the multimeter leads onto the circuit. So the thing with voltage is 
you don't break the circuit. All you do is take a reading from it. So I've I had my car battery here. I take a reading from it. If you get the leads the wrong way around, it doesn't matter. You'll just get a negative sign rather than a positive. But all you're doing is taking a reading from the circuit. So when I put these two leads on a car battery and it says 12 and a half, 12.5 volts, all it's telling me is the difference, voltage difference point to point. So across that battery, the difference, because volts is pressure, uh, so the push for the current. So it's telling me the difference in push from the positive post to the negative is 12.5 volts. You can't injure yourself or, or do any damage doing a voltage test because you're making your own circuit against uh, an existing circuit. So you're not breaking into the circuit and disturbing it anyway. You don't have to just do it across a battery. So you can do point to point anywhere in a car. So you could go from the battery to the alternator, go from the battery to a uh, starter motor, from the battery to a switch in the car and just see how much voltage is lost point to point. Obviously there's two sides to every circuit. There's the positive side and the negative. So do bear in mind if you're doing that sort of test, but generally speaking, just take a reading from a circuit and you'll see the voltage drop. Obviously bear in mind that circuit needs to be turned on. So if you're doing a voltage drop test from battery to a bulb, make sure you turn the lights on, otherwise you won't be getting any readings. So that's the voltage test. Again, start at the top and work down like I keep saying. And then the last one is amps, uh, which is this one. Again, you've got a DC and an AC. So again, depending on where you are uh, and what you're doing, uh, we'll determine which of those settings you put it on. So on this particular one, uh, I'll do DC, because obviously DC amps is what I'd be using in a car. You've got 10, you've got two, and you've got milliamps, and then um, microamps. So those are at one thousandth of a milliamp. So you've got amps, milliamps, uh, micro amperes. So lots of different settings there. The one thing people get wrong quite often is if they put it on 10 amps and they think they put it on volts, that will blow the fuse that's sat inside this multimeter. 12 point, uh, 10 amps is a lot, lot less uh, than the equivalent of uh, 10 volts. A 12.5 volt battery could uh, push 700 amps. So make sure that you put it on the right setting before you put the test leads on. You can't blow the fuse on the multimeter on, on voltage and you can't damage it on the resistance either, but you can damage it on the amp setting. Obviously, depending on which uh, amp setting you're using, you might have 10 amps, two amps. So just on 10, you'd use that one. Anything lower than that from two amps to milliamps to microamp amperes would all be in that setting there. Uh, and as I didn't mention before, if you look on there, they've got voltage and ohms, so that's the same part for that. So hopefully that makes sense. You've got your resistance in ohms. You've got DC volts, AC volts, uh, DC amps and AC amps on this particular multimeter. You do get other ones like this one here where it will do certain things like there's temperature setting and so on. Um, but most of them do the same. Obviously bear in mind that some are rated differently. This one's a category three, which would be fine for electric vehicles and hybrid cars because it goes up to a thousand volts and it'll say category three here. So do bear in mind if you're buying one that it's rated for whatever test you need to do. I uh, hope that's helpful and it makes sense and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.